I'm just going to ask you how you think that the um, the potential website and the McFarland collection itself, how could they be best integrated into the curriculum and at what level do you think is best and what would really engage your students? Yeah, well, I mean, being part of the presentation here today and hearing some of the feedback from the teachers in the classroom definitely sounds like there's some great potential for that integration. I heard one of the grade 8 teachers talk about their focus this semester on different societies in time and different cultures in time. And it, it kind of sounded like she gestured to different cultures in different geographical locations, right? Like Egyptian culture at a certain period, in Avalot culture at a certain period. I mean, this website could really be a key part of that curriculum, mm -hmm. you know, to see Inuit culture in the 1860s. Mm -hmm. And maybe in your map there, as you have okay. technical difficulties, <laughs> your map there with the artifacts in the 1860s, uh, maybe your map then could have a timestamp and you could see how the area changes from 1860 to 1870 to 1880, 1890, and then on up. You know, because there's been big changes in the Anderson River area from then till now. Yeah. You know, the communities didn't really exist in the 1860s. People lived on the land and they were spread out, um, which is why the, probably the specimens came from all over and not from one mm -hmm. spot. Um, so maybe, you know, that could see that. Just maybe bringing, bringing the context of the McFarland collection out of the 1860s and connecting it on through, you know, in time. So that, I guess that would be more of a grade 8 thing. And then we heard... Uh, a professor talking about uh, Northern Studies classes and how um, this website could show how different specimens were represented in this time, so different parkies and parkas and how they looked and the ulus, how they looked. So maybe showing your collection um, aligned next to other similar artifacts from different times. So like uh, an ulu from today versus ulu from then. Mm -hmm. on your website to see, like, can we notice any changes here? Mm -hmm. Or even just um, the Canada Goose par Parka from today yeah. versus... Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and it would also be interesting to know more about um, McFarland and the HBC and who, the, who he was and who his buddy was, um, Robert Kennicott, mm -hmm. uh, and why they were coming up. Maybe that could be part of the socials curriculum on Canadian history or Hudson's Bay history or relations between um, the United States, Britain, and, and the Canada, young country Canada. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure where in the curriculum that would fit in, but or what grade, but it seems like an opportunity there mm -hmm. on the website to say, like, mm -hmm. why did these people come up at this time, and, and why did they leave at a certain time? And so, that uh, point of Angela's is really interesting. Uh, when did Canada become a country? You know, and so part of that timeline could be, you know, uh, when did people start collecting museum collections? Where did they go? Why did they go to those places? Why didn't this collection stay in Canada? Yeah. Yeah. And maybe also as part of the Aboriginal Studies, Northern Studies components. You know, this, the whole experience in the 1860s revolved around trade and exchange. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for my brief exposure to Innovalid history, I mean, Inaval people have been really amazing traders over time, you know, they were getting the metal from ships that they scoured and also from Siberia trading along the coast and this probably to them was just another person they could trade with and get materials from. So um, to kind of put in the context of Inaval ability to trade and people that they were trading with, um, the Peel River Post was in at 1840 and then mm -hmm. here 1861 and then Herschel whalers are coming in just 20 years later so yeah so just kind of seeing how they are able to trade at different times too. So the collection is also then a real chance to showcase Inuvialuit abilities you know as traders and as being very uh, opportunistic and taking in new technologies and definitely yeah mm -hmm. and then also you know from my perspective as a student I'm really impressed by the website and your presence here and presentation to our school because so often research that comes out of the academia, out of campus, you know, it stays on campus, unfortunately. And there's so much potential to engage the communities and to allow communities to direct the way we research so that it comes back and serves people. You know, um, public scholarship should be public. It shouldn't just be housed at, on campus and on a shelf somewhere. 
Um, so that's a really great challenge to us all who are studying on campus or trying to get a degree. It's just how can we engage people and uh, work together to use research to help people. You know, and I see this website as being driving right towards that. You know, mm -hmm. um, trying to generate and promote an invalid history and show a, a way to collaborate between people from the campus or from the museum and right here in, in our schools. So, yeah, that's really an incredible opportunity. Great, thanks.